darted the dog and then turned the hose, that high-powered hose on the dog. Um, I, I, he was disciplined for that and then shortly thereafter went on a month's leave. What was the discipline? Uh, it, was, it was a write-up. Was he disciplined for both events separately? No. And, and this is why. I called the gentleman that called in the complaint about the dog. Um, he and his wife are both animal lovers, have multiple pets. I is asked, this one that was guarded? Yes. Yeah. I asked him for the details. Tell me what you saw. You know, I don't work for the county. I don't, you know, tell me what you saw. He said that, I mean, that Phil darted the dog from a distance of at least 45 feet. So it wasn't a close range like was original. That's why I say the rumors are just crazy. That Phil tried multiple times to get the dog or subdue the dog with the catch pole. Well, first with the leash and then with the catch pole. And when that did not work and the dog was still showing aggressive behavior, he darted the dog. Well, apparently what happened was the dog, of course, was moving about and the dart hit the dog in the chest, which most likely, according to the vet, punctured an artery. Um, and the dog was bleeding quite a bit. Now, what happened when he brought the dog back and proceeded to, to hose the dog down with a high power hose at close range is completely unacceptable. It is. So it what is. was the rationale for doing that? Was the dog was covered with blood. And so he was trying to probably get... He did go to get Raven. I mean, he did, you know, and watched all this transpire on them. He did go to get Raven. Raven came and tried to stop the bleeding. Um, they carried the dog back on the land of bed. And watching the hallway where that dog was, he was in the ISO unit. Um, multiple times people did check on this dog. My problem, and I stated this to Reagan and to Commissioner Creighton, was this dog should have had immediate veterinary care. Exactly. Not that they could have done anything for him. At that point. At that point, except he mainly euthanized the dog. Right. But as it was, Bill came back after dark brought the dog here to the emergency clinic and the dog died. So well that's that's my point. It was way too long after the dog had been started and my, Yeah. Yeah the dog was brought in about 10 45 11 a.m. in the morning. And I'd have to look at the time stamp but that dog basically suffered for yeah. that's, Well, that's that's a huge problem I have with that. That 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 dog. It's not enough that you just repeatedly go back and check on it. The dog should have just immediately gone to a vet. Anytime you hit a dog in the chest and it's bleeding like that, mm -hmm. bright red blood, you've got to figure, oh, maybe we hit an artery. But at that point, it's no longer Phil's responsibility. It was whose responsibility to get the dog to the vet? I was the warden's responsibility. Yes, warden. yes sir. And I did. Yes. I even called the vet, who she consulted, and um, he he told me pretty much what she had told me um, had transpired. And um, I, you know, I didn't want him to think I was grilling him. I just. Based on what, what she had communicated to him, he did not believe that she needed to bring the dog in. And that's a professional, but that was based on what she told him. I do, but, and that's the other thing, too. You cannot see the dog in this security tape, so you have no idea. Um, but regardless, my point was, even if the dog seemed to be regaining consciousness or whatever, he still should have been taken in right away. And I don't think the hosing Well, I mean, he was no. No, and the hosing is absolutely unex... I mean, it made me furious when I saw it because it was just... Um, Prominent. Yeah, it was. It was just completely, you know... Should have made other people's experience as well. Oh. They should have backed it up. 
Well, 